Hi friends and welcome to episode 7 of my making podcast. My name is Leni and I currently live in the northwest of Germany and I just started knitting last November. I love to learn new things to increase my self-sufficiency and to bring more sustainability into my life and with this podcast or with this new hobby into my closet. I primarily use yarns that are from Germany or other European countries to stay more on the local side. I wanted to show you my finished objects, my works in progress, some acquisitions before I pack them all up to move to the other side of Germany. I have my knitting journal here with all my notes and let's just dive into my finished objects. So my first new finished object is this headband. This is a pretty simple design that I kind of created by myself. You can find multiple tutorials on YouTube or on Ravelry how to make this type of headband. It's double knit so you always slip one stitch and on the other side you knit the other stitches that you had slipped. I made this in a seat stitch pattern and at the end you have you take both ends fold them over put them together like this and then sew them together to get this little knot. This was knit using the Dererum Natura Gilead in the color Cidre. This is a beautiful yarn from France with wool from French and Portuguese sheep. I cast on 32 stitches using 3 millimeter needles and in total just used about 35 grams of wool. So this is a very... It wasn't that quick actually because I had to stay in pattern like slip one, knit one, slip one, purl one and that was a bit... It needed my attention, but altogether it was, it didn't use a lot of yarn and I really like how it turned out. It was kind of a test to see if I like greens, if I think greens suit me, if I feel comfortable wearing greens. And before I started knitting a whole sweater in green, I thought this was a really nice little accessory that I can make. And I love it. I have been wearing it a lot since I finished it. And I now want to knit myself a whole sweater using a similar green. After that, I knit two things that you have actually already seen. I just knit two more of them, uh, which is this leafy washcloth or dishcloth. I had a lot of this Grundl eco cotton left. I still have to weave in the ends. I was too lazy to do that and thought this was a really nice pattern. I really liked it and made one for myself and another one to maybe give away. Since I have already showed you these, I don't really want to talk that much about them. After that, my boyfriend finally got his pair of socks. I had ordered, um, I had ordered some Novita yarn, showed it to him and asked him if he would like some com color combinations of these. He chose the brown and the green and I made him a kind of matching pair to my very first socks using the Novita yarn. He is already wearing them so I can only show you some photos of it. For this, again, I used the DK Weight Vanilla Socks by the Crazy Sock Lady and incorporated the pattern from Hermione's Everyday Socks, which is an extended seed stitch. I used uh, 2.5 millimeter DPNs, cast it on 60 stitches for a European size 45, started with a twisted one by one ribbing, uh, used a slip stitch heel and a rounded toe. The yarn is the Novita Seven Brothers Nature Yarn, which consists of 70% wool and 30% lyosil, or maybe better known as tensile. So this sock yarn, it is a sock yarn, doesn't have any plastic in it, and I want to try those out and see how well they hold up. The kind of downside to this plastic-free sock yarn is that you have to hand wash them, but I don't think that will be that big of a problem. I don't know how often you have to actually wash wool socks, but pr probably not as often as you do with cotton ones. So the colors that I use for these socks are Mugworth. Um, it's the number 372. I use about 90 grams and Wild Mushroom, which is the number 68, which used 35 grams. So in total, I used around 125 grams total. I have... <laughs> I have learned that I like to knit socks for myself a lot more because they are a lot smaller. And he has, compared to my, my feet, he has pretty big feet, which uses a lot more yarn and 
aren't that fun that quick to knit. But I am happy that he is happy with his socks and I am happy that I can make something for him. And I hope they will hold up. He is wearing them. He likes them. He's happy with them. After that, I finished my own pair of socks using the Novita yarn. They turned out like this. I started with a pico edging, then used this, I think that, yeah, this is the pattern from the Broken Seat Stitch Socks by Hannah. Well, I'm going to butcher that. Levaniemi. And then used, a, again, made a slip stitch heel and a rounded toe. I have to say, I do like the colors, but I think this is a bit, it's a bit very much, too much for my taste. I Probably for socks it's a fine, but it's just very high contrast and I have learned that maybe low contrast is more my my cup of tea. I think they turn out really cute. I really like this Pico edging uh, that I made, but I will probably not knit any socks with this high contrast color combinations. At the sole, I only did um, simple knitting, stockinette stitch, that's what it's called. I like how that turned out. Also, I think here the, the contrast isn't that big, but on this side, it's very high contrast. So this is again the Novita Seven Brothers Nature yarn. Um, the red is the 594 Woodbine. I used about 40 grams of this. And the white is um, number 10 off-white. I used 42 grams of this. So in total around 80 grams, a bit more 80 grams. So. Some endings I will just have cut off that are kind of in this calculation. Yes, and this is for a EU 37. And I cast on 40 stitches, also using 2.5 millimeter needles. The last finished object was finished yesterday, which is the felted hat that I knit for my boyfriend. I used a yarn to felt it. It was huge at the beginning, as they are. And the problem with that was that I had, I didn't, I did not gauge swatch. That was one of the problems, and the the size uh, changed differently horizontally and vertically you, during the felting process. So it shrunk more uh, vertically than it did horizontally. So it was from the height it was good, but from the width is what it was too large. So last time I again asked you if you had any ideas. And Johanna from Knotenkopf had the marvelous idea to just felt it with a felting needle. So I ordered one of these and yesterday evening my boyfriend felted his hat himself. And now it, or we first of all cut out a pretty big chunk of it. And then uh, he felted it and now it fits. It's, he's very happy with it. And that is finally also a finished object. And this is actually pretty, it, the fabric that the felting created is really nice, thick fabric. He is very happy with it. And it's probably just the perfect hat to wear outside in the winter because it's so thick, it's so nice and comfy. And my last finished object that I can show you is my saltwater shawl. This is how it turned out. I hope you can kind of see it. I did add one more section of also this broken seat stitch and then continued with the edging that was written in the pattern just to make it a bit larger. I am happy how it turned out. I actually really enjoyed, so this edging is crocheted. This starting with, focus, starting with this white and then another red band and then these little sand castles, that's what she was going for because this is the salt water shawl. I really enjoyed crocheting those on. That was a lot of fun. It was just, it kind of calmed me down and was medi meditative and repetitive. And I really enjoyed that. So this is, yeah, 
the Saltwater Shawl, a pattern by Rachel Brockman. It's a free pattern. It's a beautiful pattern. And for this, I use the West Yorkshire Spinners, the Croft in Erin Weight. This, the white is uh, the color 10 again, Solemn. And the red is Western Wake. I have found on different sides, different names for this. That's what I bought it as. For the knitting needles, I used a 4.5 millimeter needle and for this crocheted edge, I used a 3 millimeter crochet hook. I don't know if that was the right hook to choose. Probably I could have used a larger one. I just didn't have a larger one, so I just went with what I had and used a 3 millimeter hook. I also incorporated an unknown white yarn here at the top. My sister gifted it to me. We don't know what it is. But I think it fits very, really well. You can't really see the difference between the Westerwick and the white yarn. In my last episode, I kind of asked you for some recommendations about how to get it wider. And I also found a great resource that I just wanted to mention um, that shows you how shawls are constructed. And this is on YouTube by Nerdy Knitting. She showed some different techniques and how the shawl would then shape itself. So those were all my finished projects up till this point. I had hoped that I had I had hoped that I could have finished my Felix pullover. But <laughs> because of my own stupidity, I could not, and I will tell you about that in my acquisition section. But I can quickly show you the things that I'm working on right now, which also incorporate some acquisitions. Last week we were in the city or nearest city to where I live and I visited one yarn store and they had a bit of a sale and I picked up this Lana Grossa Meilenweit yarn which is the Zoya Aurora. This is made up of 60% wool, 20% polyamide and 20% viscose made from based on soy. This is not the yarn that I would have chosen for myself, but I thought for gifting, making gifts, this is perfect because you don't have to hand wash it. You can just throw it in the washing machine. And I really wanted to make some socks for my nieces and I didn't want to burden my sister with the task of hand washing her kids' socks. So I chose this one and this is actually the first self-striping yarn that I have ever knit with and it's really fun and I have one finished sock this is um, number one and I just cast on the second sock this morning this is a bit of an untraditional sock because I made a spiral sock so it doesn't have a heel but I thought maybe for small children it's really nice that you don't have to like check if the sock sits in the right direction and if her feet grows, she can still keep wearing these socks. This, so to make this spiral, it's knit in a two by two pattern, two knitting, two purling. And then after every four rows, you kind of shift it one to the side and then continue like that. The toe is um, knit in stockinette. I just couldn't figure out how to stay in pattern, so I just switched to plain old stockinette for that one. These are knit also on a 2.5 millimeter needle, and I cast on 48 stitches for this. She is not even two years old, so she still has tiny, tiny feet, which are really cute. Um, so you can kind of get a idea how big these are. I mean, you can compare them to myself. They are small. So that is the only work in progress that I actually made some significant progress on that I can show you. I worked a bit on my blanket, but nothing exciting to show you. And as I said, I really wanted to continue knitting my Felix pullover. I showed this to you last time. This is what, this is what it looks like. This is knit using a Finkhoff wool, the Think, Finkhoff thin wool in this color. Um, I was gifted this by my sister. She only had three skeins. I kept this one to 
make the transition smoother. She bought this years ago, so I would not get 100% the same colorway. So I wanted to keep this and then, um, first of all, hold this. I'm holding a double, hold this double with a new one and then striping it or whatever you do to get a smoother transition. So I ordered some new wool from Finkhof and as I had already kind of said, due to my own stupidity, I ordered this color. I opened the package, looked at it and I thought, okay, it's a bit darker than what I ordered. This is the comparison. No, the colorway didn't change that much. I just ordered the wrong color. So this is the gray brown and this is the dark brown. If I would have looked on the tag, it says GB on here, which probably stands for gray brown and this is the dark brown. Yeah, I <laughs> went back and ordered some more of this. So I had ordered three of these just to be sure that I had enough. Six in total for this sweater. It's probably way more than I needed. But now I had three of these, three of these, and neither are enough to make a sweater. So I ordered three more of this, two more of this, so I have enough to knit a sweater with both of these. And I hope it will arrive tomorrow so I can finally continue knitting my Felix pullover. With that shipping, I also ordered some other exciting stuff. First of all, two sock yarns, which are 100% wool. They say that they twisted it a bit differently or plied it, twisted it, spun it a bit differently. So it's more, it holds up better. I am very curious to see how, how this works. If they are a good sock wool, I wanted to try some plastic free sock or I wanted to try to make some plastic free socks and see how they hold up. And this one or the Finkhof wool was also on my list. This is their white one and this is their gray white one. I don't know what merled, merled sock wool, that's what they say. It's a bit thicker than fingering weight, so it has 250 meters for 100 grams wool. And this is German wool. Um, also, it comes from ecologically controlled um, farms. It comes from ecologically controlled farms. Um, and as I said, it's German. It's come, so it's one of the most regional wools that I can get. I can always make it better or there's always room for potential, but staying in Germany is pretty good in my opinion. Then I also got these, these are soles for like slippers and I wanted to make or I want to make myself some felted slippers and I thought these were just good to also sew under it so they hold up better. I have some uh, felted slippers but they are slowly wearing um, at the bottom of the heel so I will want to replace them for the coming winter. And another really exciting thing that I purchased when I was there um, was a spindle. This is my very first time or I really wanted to get into spinning just because I think I like I like to do things myself. I want to come as close to the raw prod product as I can. So one of my dreams is to actually knit a sweater or a cardigan or something like that from starting with raw wool. Doing all of it myself, like cleaning it, carding it, spinning it, dyeing it, and then making, knitting my own, my own garment. And I'm now kind of working my way backwards, starting with learning how to knit, starting to learn how to spin. And another thing that I bought uh, was more of their thin wool in white. So this is the sock wool. I don't know where that ended up. Just this one in white so that I, that I can dye it and play around with that. I also, I went a bit overboard <laughs> when I ordered 
things there. So I bought 500 grams, which would be enough for to make a sweater. This is a sport weight yarn. I don't really have a project in mind for that yet. I first want to see how I can dye it. I want to use natural dyeing methods, but that is a project for after I moved. So getting back to my spindle, I bought this spindle and one kilo of unspun wool roving. I did not know how big that would be. So, <laughs> so this is, um, if you have wondered, apparently one kilogram of wool roving or unspun wool, which I now can, I now can play around with and start spinning. My beginnings are very inconsistent, as you can see. I think that's pretty normal and natural, but it's getting better, it's getting more consistent. I am having a lot of fun. It's, it calms me down a lot. It's just very meditative and I can like zone out and just forget the world around me. And it's a lot of fun. It's a very slow progress, but I think that will just pick up the better I am or the more routine I am at spinning. But so far, I am happy with how this is going and just as a, as a hobby, as a pastime for me. So this might be my other work in progress. I'm just slowly working my way uh, using the wool. I'm probably totally over spinning some sections of this. But that's just part of the learning process progress and I am now actually also really I really want to dye some of this roving or cartered wool and spin with that because I think that would be even more fun than just to spin this white one. My last acquisition comes from the lovely Johanna from Knotenkopf. She also has a podcast. She is also from Germany and um, we did a little wool swap. So if you can remember I uh, together with my Novita sock yarn order, I got a yellow, which I hadn't ordered, and they said that I should just keep it because shipping would be too much. And she saw it, and she said that, that the, the yellow is really her color. I said it wasn't mine, so... And she had some yarn that weren't her color, but were my color, so we swapped. And I got these beautiful three mini skeins of sock wool which I really want to make a beautiful pattern of. I would like to make some a color work sweater, just so this will, I think it's, it's a bit too, it's a bit too nice to just make socks out of. So I think it will be beautiful in a sweater. And I actually think this combination would be uh, lovely. The problem with that is this is sport weight, this is fingering weight, so I would either have to get another really dark brown fingering weight yarn or maybe find a lace yarn that I can hold this double with to match up uh, the thickness or the weight of the yarn. I have... I was kind of thinking of what color would go best with these if I would like to use a lighter fingering uh, lace yarn uh, to brighten it up and maybe increase the contrast a bit. Or if I would want to go with a darker one just to dampen the contrast. I haven't, I don't know yet. I haven't found a pattern that I really want to think would suit this a lot. I have checked Ravelry and I was kind of thinking about maybe a design that is called bangles that would look beautiful but so far I haven't really decided I haven't fixed my mind on anything but these just are really really beautiful and I think they they deserve a, a nice color work a sweater piece so since starting knitting I have kind of come across some or I have learned some new things about myself that I would also just like to share. First of all, I started knitting just to kind of slow down. I think this, this concept of slow living is really appealing and I had a lot of stress in my old job 
and knitting is kind of a nice counterbalance because it just is as you know it just takes a lot of time to to make to create something and one of the things that I am kind of learning about myself is first of all that I don't like to have a lot of works in progress simultaneously that I am a very monogamous knitter because otherwise it kind of stresses me out. I just like, when I knit, I focus on one project and want to finish that and not be switching back and forth between projects. That just, it kind of stresses me out. If that works for you, I am really happy for you. It obviously probably also has its perks, but I just found for myself that having one, maybe maximum two projects like my sofa blanket, I can't take that with me on the go but if I have some socks or something like that, that's just nice to have while you're yeah, out. And this progress of living life slower, living life more meaningful is also another thing that I learned is if often if I see a pattern that I find beautiful, I want to make it and have it. But the problem is I don't really take the time to slow down, step, take a step back and ask myself if this project is actually really me. Which probably kind of happened with the Piper sweater. It's really beautiful. I like it. I like how it, it suits me. But it's not really me. It's not the version that, of me that I have in my head, the aesthetics. And also maybe this... Um, the saltwater shawl, it also has the same colors and that is actually not really the color theme, the color sheen, the aesthetic look that I want to have, that I want to have in my wardrobe. And this is just a thing that I want to keep reminding myself of just before I take any actions to take a step back and think, is this really me? This is also with these socks, they're also nice, but they're just not really what I am going for. And I find, I think in this, in this pretty, we live in a pretty hectic world that is heavily influenced by social media, Instagram, Ravelry, it's also a form of social media. And I just want to, I want to give myself, I want to take the time to take a step back and just breathe and make conscious dis and make con con conscious decisions that's hard to say um, before I take action with my purchasing of items purchasing of wool and knitting starting to knit things because it's just it's a lot of money that goes into a project it's a lot of time that goes into a project and in the end, it's kind of sad if you aren't that happy about the result. But I do think this is a learning process that you just have to go through. Once at the beginning, you're, or I am at least, I'm really excited about all the things that I could create, all the beautiful garments that I can make. But it's just a reminder that I need. Maybe you also need it from time to time just to say, take a step back, really think about, is this project me? Do I want to make this project for me? Or do I just want to make it because it looks beautiful on other people? I most likely also just needed these projects that aren't me to figure this out or figure out more what I want, what yarns I like, what colors, sheens, what colors I like. That I'm more of a fan of these muted tones, like these beiges, maybe also these pinks, which are, they're very natural muted types of colors and not these crass ones. Thinking about contrast, that I would rather use like low contrast combinations like this rather than high ones like this red and this white. It obviously also makes it a bit harder if you order yarns online so you can't see them, feel them and uh, know how they look in real life. So for example, this red from the Novita yarn, it looked a lot more muted online than it does in real life and it also has this kind of sheen to it, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but for socks that's fine. But I just think knitting 
or making things for oneself is also just a great way to get to know oneself a bit more. Like I said, slow down, not, I always have this image in mind, like people, what you see on TV, Black Friday, if they storm into store, they just grab everything that they can. Or also stores like, what are they called? Primark, where just people, I heard the story that somebody went in there, bought stuff for like 200, 300 euros, went out and they couldn't even tell you anymore what they had bought. And that's just not the way that I want to consume. That's not sustainable for my wallet, for the planet. It's just not a good way to consume. And I think that also it applies to all, all forms of consumption. That's also a reason why I want to use wools from Germany or other European countries and avoid Australian merino or South American alpaca that are two regions where a lot of wool comes from because they are just one, one halfway around the planet. It's not sustainable. It's also a region far away from me. And that's also a concept that they often talk about when it comes to Scandinavian or Icelandic wools. They are a lot rougher. They are a lot more rustic, as one would say. But if you think about it in another way, the local sheep that are adapted over hundreds of years, they produce this wool in, for this region. Obviously, if you would take an Icelandic sheep and plop it into Australia, it wouldn't be happy there. But this wool comes from the local region and that wool might also just be the best option for a person living there. For the, for the environment, for the weather, a wool from an Icelandic sheep would be the perfect wool to make a jumper for an Icelandic person. Or from a person who lives in Iceland. The same for Germany or any other region. I know it's hard to find pretty local wool. It's also always a question of budget. Not everybody can pay what lo local wool costs. But I am at this point where I want to use local wool. And I mean, the most local wool for, to me or one of the most local wools to me that is also easy, easily accessible is the Finko wool. It is from southern Germany, so it's also a few hundred kilom kilometers away from me. But... It's a great option and it's also actually a very affordable option. It is more on the rustic side. I think I am able to wear this next to skin. I had tried on my Felix pullover made from this wool and I could feel it on my neck, but I didn't find it very scratchy. And I think it's also just a factor that I can train my body to. Using these local wools, also, first of all, it just, it's just, I think it's, beautiful to use the things that you have around you that you have accessible that are accessible to you that come from your location i mean in today's world your location or your accessibility radius it can be as large as you want it to be but i think if you focus back onto what we have local to ourselves it's such a valuable thing i mean i feel a lot more connected to german wool than wool that comes from southern America. It's just, I don't know, it's just a feeling. I know it. I know this is German. It's not about it being German, but it's about being regional. I know kind of where it comes from. I know that I could visit those places. It's just a more intense connection that I have to this. I have also learned a lot about permaculture and one of their principles is to just use what you have around you. So these were just some thoughts that I that came to me while knitting, while looking or watching other podcasters. I love watching other podcasters who also just are more conscious about where their wool comes from, that it's local, that it's sustainably produced. Even better if they actually know the sheep breed. I think that's also, that's also another rabbit hole that I will one day dive into. So far, I pretty much have just used uh, Merino. As far as I am aware of, maybe I should research more on that um, part. Probably the West Yorkshire Spinner isn't Merino. But these are just some things that I would, I would love to learn more about, be more conscious of what wools that I buy, where they come from, from what sheep they come from, and what sheep 
brings what factor or what quality to the wool. I mean, there's a reason there are a lot of different sheep breeds and the wool is different between each sheep breed and there's a reason for that. So these are just some thoughts that came to me in the last few weeks and I just wanted to share them with you. Take what you find interesting, take what you think fits into your life and leave the rest. I would love to maybe open up a discussion about this. Maybe also if you have some ideas or some sources to share, that would be lovely. And I don't want to I don't want to bash anybody who uses cheaper wool if that is all that they can afford and if that makes them happy in no way. I just want to maybe make you a bit more interested in where your wool comes from. Maybe check out the locations and also see if you have any local wool that you can use. Otherwise, thank you so much for spending some time with me, for listening to me talk about wool and sustainability because I think that is, that's just a very, very important topic that we need to bring more into our daily life. And until next time, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy crocheting, happy making. And I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. And I will see you in my next video.